All right, in quad flight performance, we focus a lot on PD balance and PD gain strength. These two sliders right here, this is PD balance, this is PD gain strength. But why is that? What aerodynamic properties of the quad and the PID loop and how it's reacting to things have these two things as being the core of what you need to have right for your quad to fly well? Well, let's check it out. Okay, I was just finishing up a 10 inch tune and I was scrubbing through the logs and I was looking at a couple of these things and I thought this would be a really good way to kind of bring it together on why those two things are so critical. So in this section of the log, we're just doing a simple pitch forward move just on the pitch axis. So I slowed this down to 25% speed so you can see the move itself. You can see it's just a nice smooth pitch forward. So to darken up these traces, what do we have here is we have the green as the stick. So that's the step point right here. The blue here is the gyro. So that's the actual quad motion. So as we move the sticks forward, the set point moves up from a zero degree rotational speed. You can see right here, it's at 17. So here it's at one degree, all the way up to around 800 degrees rotational speed. And you can see the gyro is actually 803 right at this exact spot. So that's just the degrees per second rotation rate. You know, if we're at zero degrees per second, it will hold that. When the, you move your stick forward, it's saying, hey, to start to rotate forward at 800 degrees per second, if you'd hold the stick forward, obviously, it would just keep rotating 800 degrees per second. But we're telling it to start to rotate forward 800 degrees per second. The PID loop reacts to, to tell it to do that. The first thing we see here is we have the P term kicking in because we have a gap between the difference between where the sticks are and where the gyro is actually at, that's proportionally. So whatever that pit error is, that's multiplied by the pit, the P gain, and it tells it to push it forward. We also have some feed forward here as well, you know, telling it to go the same direction. So if it's in the same direction as the set point, that's pushing the quad into the move. Now you can see this D term right here is fighting that movement the entire time. So it's the dampening force. Now, if we go into here and add our motor traces, you can see that when we go ahead and kick that into the move, that the two motors in the back spin up. So you can see there's they're not spun up here, and there they start to spin up and go up to around 80 some percent. And right at this spot, you can see that the pit error is starting to close the gap, so the P term starts to come down in strength but the D term is still strong. Well, it's literally the PID sum, right? So it's the P, this is a positive. Since the, it's above the line here, the, the zero axis, this is positive. I term's a little bit positive here. Feed forward at this specific spot, zero, but it was positive when we were right back here. Right at this spot right here, you can see that D term of the entire time is negative. So as the P term comes down, the D term is the most prevalent term. And since your positive terms are going down, like this is now 75 and D term still 100, that it's actually the, the pit sum, the motors, the commands for the motors are actually, instead of being a positive to roll forward, it's actually telling it to be a negative to roll backwards. And that kicks up the front motors. So there's that balance, that P to D balance is the yin and the yang. It's a very precise dance between those two gain values to have the appropriate response. And it's this precise balance between the two that as the pit error starts to close, as the gyro starts to come up and actually starts to reach what the set point, you know, the degrees rotation that your sticks are commanding, that the D term is strong enough yet to then kick the other direction to dampen the move so it doesn't overshoot it. So if we look at the pit sum, which is this trace right here for the pitch axis, you can see that spot where it's mostly positive commands, you know, the sum of the PID and feet forward are all positive. So move the quad to go forward. At this point right here precisely, P term is still saying to move forward, but D term is stronger. There's more D term here. So this is a negative 102, this is only 91. So the PID sum actually starts to invert and it's now the total sum of, of the PIDs, you know, you're just adding them together, is now a negative number. So that's gonna say, hey, start to put on the brakes. And then you obviously can see here that the motors are still spun up as it's starting to go into the put on the brakes mode. 
then the front motor, the back motor spin down, the front motor spin up, and it puts on the brake. So you can see is if we had too little D-term, this point, this zero crossing point would slide this way. So it would be more where my red marker is. And if that's too far forward like that, you're gonna get that the gyro is gonna overshoot the target and then have to oscillate and settle back on it. So that would be too little D-term. If you had too much D-term, then it would just slide this zero crossing point back further this way, and it would actually put on the brakes sooner, so you kind of slowly roll in to the set point, to the target rotational rate. Now this quad uh, is a 10 inch. This is actually a little bit over dampened right in this spot. This, you can see it is kind of slowly rolling into it at this location, but you know, it's a 10 inch, there's other factors at play here with motor saturation. So maybe this is the perfect example, but hopefully you can get the gist of this zero crossing and how that P to D balance is a ratio that's kind of quad specific, can be access specific. It's not an arbitrary number. It is, you know, where your quad has enough push, but also has enough dampening strength that it's not gonna do its overshooting. And that has to do with inertia, moment of inertia, the weight of the motors versus the center. There's a lot of aerodynamic properties going into that, but you can find that number. And again, that comes back to this PDD balance slider right here. Now what we wanna do is I've talked about in tuning, my tuning videos, two pack tuning videos, I'll make a link to that in the upper right, is you wanna have this slid down as low as you can. So you wanna have as much P-term as you can but not overshooting. And the reason for that is this next part. So this next section here is gonna be a prop wash turn. So we're gonna do the 180 degree turn and kind of sit back into it. You can see the quad is going backwards and right here is where the prop wash is, where I'm throttling up to then start going the other direction. That's where you're gonna get the prop wash, not as you're just drifting back, it's when you actually start to throttle up to arrest the move and go the other direction, that's when you're gonna get the prop wash to occur. And let's look at that. Now, in the previous example, we showed how the D term is always fighting the P term, right? So as I entered that stick move, they were always opposing each other. And I'll throw that graphic up there just so you can remind yourself and see that. But let's look at the prop wash here. So in this prop wash, we have this oscillation, and this is the gyro signal right here. So this is where it's starting to go off the set point. You can see the, the green line's the set point. So I'm just, you know, this is just the roll axis, just to simplify stuff. But I'm not moving the sticks, you know, on the roll axis. It's just sitting there, but my gyro's starting to kind of, it's kind of starting to roll and oscillate back and forth. That's the, the wash. Now, if you can, the AHD, you can't see anything because it's tuned. But um, here you can see this little bit of oscillation start and notice the difference that the P term and the D term are pushing in the same direction. So those two terms are working together to fight the oscillation in the prop wash. That same thing happens for wind. And that's why you wanna have your P term as strong as it can be without having overshoot in those scenarios where they're opposing each other you don't want to have too much P-term because then it would overshoot. But you don't want to have, you don't want to be over dampened as well because then your P-term could be a little higher. And you got to remember those two things are going to work together in prop wash moves. They're also going to work together to mitigate any wind vibration on the quad. So the P-term and the D-term, when you're doing stick moves, they fight each other. But when there's outside influences on the quad, like wind, throbbles, prop wash, whatever else, they, they work together, so you want them to both be as strong as they can be together. Uh, but again, when they're, you don't want them to have an overshooting oscillation. So that, that balance between the two, as before, that's called critically dampened. That's what you want it to be. In this scenario, they're working together as the gyro is going down. The D term is the first one on the scene to tell the motors to spin up to go the opposite direction to fight this coming down. They want it to, to push it to come back up. And then the P terms coming along behind it to say, yeah, let's let's do that. So it's giving double the signal. You know, these are both positive numbers here in this scenario. So they are both pushing. So 1.4 and the D term you can see is doing most of the work, 18.6. So your D term is really the prop wash fighter. They're both pushing in the same direction to get this gyro to come back up. 
Now, as the gyro starts to approach the set point, you can see now the D-term flips over inside and it actually tells it to start to slow down and break. So now the P-term and the D-term are not fighting in the right direction. The D-term's, the P-term saying, hey, keep, keep coming up, keep moving this gyro signal up, but the D-term saying, no, 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 slow down. So as the gyro starts to go off track, the P and the D-term work together to say, don't, no, don't go off track. But as the gyro starts to come back to where your sticks are at or the set point, then the D-term kind of keeps track and say, okay, well, you're coming back to set point, that's good. Oh, you're going a little too quick now and it's gonna reverse its sign so that it doesn't overshoot and kind of just comes right up onto the set point. Now, here it does do a little overshoot because shoot there's aerodynamic stuff going on, you know, right in the midst of the prop wash. Um, but then it, you know, it does its thing to dampen that out and, and kind of quill that oscillation. And again, you can see that it's, it's working well. You can see the motors are, you know, oscillating, you can hear the fluttering, but you don't see it in the, the HD, so that's all it that really matters, actually. I don't see, I don't see any prop wash there. Yeah, so it's working pretty well. So coming back to these sliders, to wrap this up, we have this balance between the two terms. You wanna have as much P term as you can, so this slider would actually be moving down as low as it can be, that you don't have overshoot when you're doing stick inputs. Then once you have that balance set, then you want to be looking at your PD gain strength so that if you want to combat prop wash or have a little bit more control, to increase your control, you can move both those gains up together, the P and the D, since they're, they work together to fight throttle, to fight the outside influence of wind, to fight prop wash. They work, the P and D work together so we can use this slider to basically increase control make the quad feel more locked in to that set point by bringing the, the strength of those two gains up together. So as you're in, a, in some sort of scenario where the gyro is gonna to start to go off track of your sticks, those two terms together, as we, you know, we can increase, increase their strengths here, will push so that the gyro doesn't go off track. And then as it's starting to come back onto the set point, then the, that balance between the P and D term comes back into play, this PD balance slider here. Okay, well that is it. I was hoping this would be short and simple and to just underline the importance of these two key concepts in pit tuning and flight dynamics with quadcopters. It's all about the PD balance and having that critically damp balance between the two. And then this PD gain strength. You know, if you wanna have more control, if, you, if it's feeling sloshy and not locked in, you, you just move this slider up and that's what it's there for. And the slider's are there to make it simple that, you know, as, Whatever this PD balance is, as you move this slider, you don't have to worry about throwing this balance off. That's that's locked in all by itself, and then it just adjusts these numbers based on the math and just simple multiplication and ratios, and it just slides these gains up. You can see both at the same time. Of course, sometimes people ask about the master multiplier slider. It's basically the same thing as the PD gain strength one. It just moves the I term with it and feed forward. So this moves everything all at the same time. Uh, whereas the PD gain, it just moves the P and the D and you can see it doesn't mess with the feed forward or the I terms. So I don't use the master as much personally. I generally leave these I terms here unless I have a really off balance quad where you know, like that one that I tuned, the nine inch with the big huge rock on the front, then you needed more I term gain strength. So I move the master up. But if your quad's fairly well balanced, you don't need a ton of I term. So uh, I usually just leave that one alone unless I need some more feed forward or something like that. With that, if you still do have any questions about this topic, drop them down in the comments below. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.